Let's do this! <sighs> Having grown up around the mysterious master chef, a.k.a. his father, Suma knows the ins and outs in the cooking world. Over time, he was able to perfect his skills to the point where he can bring girls to climax with just one bite. Just when everything seems to be going good, his father disappears, leaving Suma with only one way to go. Episode 1. Welcome to Food Wars, where our protagonist, Suma, tries to consume some trashy squid. With each bite, the taste gets worse until one of his friends arrives, asking for his food. Suma gets to work, pairing two large rice bowls, with each one glistening and looking perfect. The high school girl takes the first bite, as if she just got run through. She moans loudly, revealing she is loving the food. After her bites, she decides that Suma's father's rice bowl was better, revealing it was a competition between the two. After this battle, Suma is getting closer to losing to his father for the 500th time. The other guests in the restaurant then try the food and realize that Suma's father's meal is the best they have ever had. The girl who judged him firstly tries to comfort him, telling him that his dish was still good. Suma then presents the squid he was munching on from before, asking the girl if she wants to try it. He agrees, and once she takes a bite, her entire body gets covered by slippery arms from a squid, making you wonder how good the food really was. After she tries a bite, Suma announces that his dream is to become the best chef in the world. After tasting this, Suma's dad tells him that the squid might be nasty, but his previous combo was worse. Guests within the restaurant wonder why they are competing for who has the worst dish. Later that night after lunch, two of them encounter the dinner rush filled with day workers. Everyone leaves satisfied until a mysterious girl is seen looking into the restaurant from a car. When they clear out the dinner rush, Suma thinks about how he can improve his cooking further. He realizes that his father is a master chef, wants to take over the restaurant in his stead. Suddenly, the woman from outside enters the building and introduces herself as Minegasaki, an urban planner. She flexes her breasts, but Suma isn't very interested, asking what she is here for. The woman presents a building design, revealing she wants to purchase the building from them. Suma tells her there is no way they will sell their restaurant, telling her they are the best in town. He asks Suma if he will take responsibility if he can't make a perfect dish the customer wants. Suma accepts her challenge, burning her business card in the process. Before we continue, let's take a moment to answer the question of the day. Did you have folded for her seduction or held your ground like Suma? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out in the next video. Now. Back to the recap. As Minegasaki leaves, she thinks about Suma, potentially requiting him to her business ventures. Suma, on the other hand, is living a lax life, picking up groceries for the following day. He receives a call on his way home from his father, telling him he won't be home tonight for dinner. He then asks Suma what his plan is after middle school, to which Suma answers. He is planning on working at the restaurant. Suma thinks about his father and wonders why he is stuck in a restaurant like this, being a master chef. Upon arriving home, Suma is stunned to see all of their food rummaged through and destroyed. He runs outside and sees their sign covered in milk. She tells Suma that she is starving, asking him for some food. Following this, she walks inside of the restaurant, demanding that Suma cook her the juiciest meat dish he can. Suma, however, stands outside idly, listening to the woman scream at him for not serving her. She tells him that if he can't serve her, then he needs to give her the restaurant. Suma doesn't back down, however, telling the woman once he serves her, she needs to leave their restaurant forever. He then whips out his headband and apron, declares the battle is on. After going back to the kitchen, he gets to work, cutting every potato with precise precision. He perfectly seasons them and impresses all of the onlookers, wondering how he has such ingredients. Following this, Minigasaki watches him stunned that he is cooking something other than what she asked for. Minigasaki asks her grunt if he destroyed all the goods to which he tells her he did, but somehow Suma still has food. Suma finally finishes up and presents a juicy pork roast to Minigasaki. Instead of trying it, she demands to give her the building and work for her at one of her luxury restaurants. She tells him his skills are being put to waste, however, Suma tells her to take a bite. As Minigasaki gets closer to the roast, she begins to realize she won't be able to hide the deliciousness of the food. With just one bite, her taste buds are taken over. Minigasaki enters a transcendent state of mind. She begins to feel the juiciness of the meat take over her body. She is interrupted by Suma asking if she likes it. He tells her that he will explain the secret to the savoring taste knowing she wants to know. He explains how he perfectly seasoned the potatoes, wrapped the bacon once it hit a certain degree, and added in a sauce to top it off. Guards for Minigasaki watch as they wish to eat another bite. She tells Suma it's not what she asked for, but her temptation takes over, forcing her to 
try and take another bite. Suma stops her, however, telling her to promise him not to try and take over the restaurant again. He walks away with the dish after not hearing a response, but Minigasaki can't resist the meat anymore. Pleads with Suma to give her more of his meat, so he accepts, gladly presenting the dish to her. Guards then jump in as well, taking multiple bites of the roast. Taste becomes so good that they lose their clothes and experience a reset in their bodies. As if the pork roast took over their bodies, they all lay on the floor defeated, leaving Suma proud as a chef. Following day, Suma decides to wash off all of the stuff smeared on his restaurant sign. During this, his dad gets back home, asking what happened, but Suma tells him it was Northing. Seeing how hard he is working on the restaurant, he's sad to tell Suma that for the next two, three years, he will be closing down the restaurant. He informs Suma that an old friend of his asked him to cook for him, so he accepted. Suma, on the contrary, tells his father, wants to stay and run the restaurant, tells him it's time to go and figure out how good of a chef he really is. Following this, he presents a flyer for a cooking school, asking him to try it out. While walking to his entrance exam, Suma thinks the school is going to be stupid filled with old people trying to teach him how to cook. As he walks closer, he starts to see more and more people begging for another chance, making him wonder where he is. Once he arrives, Suma gets nervous and calls his dad for an explanation. His dad tells him that he will be attending the most famous culinary school in Japan, with a graduation rate of less than 10%. Episode 2 at his new school, we are introduced to Irina, fellow chef at the school and student. She tells all of the chefs before her their plates were lousy and they didn't put in enough effort. She informs one man specifically that he needs to up his game, his food being complete trash. Suma, on the other hand, is still starstruck after seeing the size of the school before him. After witnessing all of the other students' guards and butlers, he wonders if he is really in the right place. Eventually, his dad is forced to let him go after a customer at his new restaurant asks him for something. He reveals he is cooking for a top-rated restaurant in New York City, treating the likes of senators and celebrities. During this, a monk enters the room and strips himself, hoping to get a bite of the food. His dad tells him that if he can't survive the academy, then he has no chance of ever surpassing him. He attempts to give him a tip, but Suma hangs up, excited to enter a new life. His dad reveals the best way to improve your cooking is to find a woman who wants to be cooked for. Rina, on the other hand, is seen preparing to test all of the incoming transfer students. Duma then bangs his foot into a bench, shaking a rich boy's tea. He apologizes, and the rich boy starts to explain some things about the school to Suma. Not only are the people there families of rich people, but they hold some of the best restaurants in the world. The man asks Suma what his restaurant is, and upon learning of it, kicks Suma off his bench, tells him that he can't be seen associating with nobody, and this angers Suma. He throws him to the ground and walks past all of the other snobby rich kids. Suma eventually arrives to where he is supposed to take his test. Arena is seen awaiting them. Following this, Arena's assistant explains the rules of the kitchen to the group, but Arena stops her. She tells the group to prepare her a dish with eggs as the main ingredient. Don't satisfy her taste buds, and they won't be able to take the test ever again. Everyone starts running, and this leaves Suma to ask the man from before what the issue is. The man explains that Arena is referred to as the God Tongue, having one of the most delicate tongues in the world. The man explains that everyone big in the cooking world is a client of hers, telling Suma he has no chance to pass. After telling them this, Arena expects every attendee to leave, causing her to flirt with her assistant. She asks her if she would like to try her food once, making her dream of how good it will be. Arena continues flirting until Suma stops her, asking when they can start the test. Arena tells Suma that as long as he uses eggs, he can make whatever. Suma approaches and tells her that's easy enough, causing her assistant to ask Suma if he knows who she is. Suma throws his knife in the air as a flex, tells her that he is ready. After inspecting his application, Arena decides that he is a second-rate cook. She is determined to fail him, feeling disrespected to have someone like him cook for her. Suma then does his usual thing, where he flings his clothes around to make it seem like a spectacle. He then moves on to the actual cooking, preparing a dish with eggs as a primary ingredient. Rina watches and wonders what kind of dish he is making, seeing all the ingredients he is using. She decides to ask Suma, telling him if he doesn't tell her she will expel him. Suma explains that he is making a secret dish from his family's recipe, a bowl of rice. Irina slams her fist on the table and tells him it's a waste of time to be cooking. She attempts to leave, but Suma tells her to wait a little longer, dish almost being complete. Finally, Suma presents to her a bowl of his dish, awaiting her to try it. Rina's assistant even notices how basic the dish before her is. Rina tells him that she is used to trying most gourmet food, and this will not do. She tells him he failed without even trying it. Suma stops her yet again. He tells her to watch as he combines the food with rice, making Arena's heart skip a beat. 
Stuma drops all of the food, the butter begins to melt onto the rice, making the dish a perfect seasoning. Rina notices this and prepares to take a bite of this new dish, realizing Suma has done well. Though she is hesitant at first, Arena decides to take a bite of it. Her taste buds are overwhelmed. After the first bite, she realizes she enjoyed it, didn't even critique it, causing her to go in for a second. Suma asks her why she is going for a second bite, wondering if she liked it. Rina this time judges the food before her, asking Suma to explain the different ingredients. Suma explains it to her, telling her that everyone was made with precision to come together and make one savory taste. Rina tries another bite, realizes that his dish is an entirely new flavor, not wanting to get rid of it. He then demands to know if he passed, to which Arena tells him it's disgusting. Her unable to convey her true feelings, and reports to her grandfather that no one passed the exam, not even Suma. Episode 3 while Suma failed the school, a young girl named Megumi tells her village folks she is leaving for school, as if it was the Polar Express, takes her from her home straight to her dream destination, Ultimate Chef School. Upon arriving, however, Megumi suffered a fate much like Suma, failing. Next, Arena is announced as the class representative, not only being the top of her class, but also the best chef. While she is on stage, students gossip about her, revealing just how talented she really is. Following this, the principal of the academy enters the stage to give the students a speech. They all shy down after seeing his striking appearance, calm down once he starts talking. He tells the group that here they will not only learn how to cook, but also the anatomy of it all. This includes the food standard, ingredients, temperatures, and everything else food-related. He tells the students only 1% of them will ever graduate, telling them of the 812 students that entered last year, 72 made it to their second year. In the in the end, only a select few will graduate from the school. Being able to count them on one hand tells the students to be ready for such a life. Ending his speech, Arena thinks to herself that she feels bad for all the other students, never having a chance at passing her. Following this thought, someone is introduced to the stage, making Arena wonder who it is. She thinks about Suma, but doesn't think it will actually be him. Once Suma starts his speech, she becomes stunned to hear what he has to say. Suma tells the entire school that he sees this school as a stepping stone for him. He declares he will have the number one spot, ends his speech. Suma then walks off the stage and finds Arena standing in her tent. He starts talking to her, however, she questions why he is even here. Suma pulls out an acceptance letter and thanks Arena for approving of his food. Arena questions how it is possible for him to be there. She remembers failing him. She accepts the decision and tells Suma she will have the number one spot. Arena informs him that their difference in skill is too large for him to have a chance. Suma laughs and tells her that he has been cooking for the past 15 years of his life. Suma declares his skills to her again, making sure that she knows he isn't a force to reckon with. Principal overhears this and smirks, making you wonder if he had a hand in Suma's acceptance. While Suma is confident in his skills, Megumi is unsure whether she belongs, having gotten the lowest scores in the school. She decides that she won't go anywhere near Suma, knowing he will bring her trouble. After she arrives at class, Suma is the only normal person making her forced to partner up with him. While all the other students are in their chef uniforms, Suma stands chilling in his usual outfit. Being partnered with Megumi, he asks her why she is acting so nervous. She explains to him that this is an elite school, and Suma laugh at her, he introduces himself and shows that he still doesn't see the school as a big deal. The teacher finally arrives and greets his class. He tells the class that anyone who doesn't receive a perfect score on their dish will receive the lowest. For example, if you get a B, you will automatically fail, making his class one of the hardest in the school. Because of this attitude, students call him the chef that never smiles. He then introduces the meal to the students and gives them two hours to cook it start to finish. Everyone else runs around frantically trying to get their ingredients, while Suma is unsure of what they are making. Megumi notices his cluelessness, and wonders if she has a chance at getting a good grade with him as her partner. They begin cooking, and Megumi stresses a bunch about the time for how long to cook it. She has a timer in front of her. She realizes she needs another ingredient and rushes off, allowing some other people to mess with their pot. Suma notices this and inspects it only to find a large amount of salt added. Gumi starts stressing out, only having around 30 minutes remaining to cook. She thinks of her family back home and starts crying, thinking it's over. Suma, however, thinks of a solution, grabbing more ingredients to improvise with. He tells Megumi to come assist him as he gets to work, cutting up various ingredients. While he cuts up new items, the students who tampered with his meal think they're done for. Their surprise, Suma approached the teacher with a finished plate. On inspection, the teacher is stunned to see how tender the meat is. Suma reveals he used honey to make the meat tenderize faster and also counter the salt. Megumi and the teacher then decide to take a bite of the meal, making them savor every flavor within the meal. Not only did it savor their taste buds, but they also made the teacher who never smiles to smile. Because of this, he grants Megumi and Suma rating higher than anyone else. Following this, the bullies drop salt into their own dishes, giving them an E rating. Episode 4
The following day, Suma is forced to walk to a new building. Not only is it super far away, but it is in the middle of nowhere. Upon arrival, Suma is surprised to see it is a run-down dormitory and his new home. After going inside, he sees it's not as bad as it looked. However, to his surprise, once he goes in a group of animals fly by, followed by a person. A speaker then tells another student to stop putting so much smoke into the rest of the place. For all, it seems like this place is chaotic. And this is reinforced once the housekeeper approaches. She introduces herself as Fumio, and also a former top-class chef. She asks Suma what ingredients he brought, telling him whoever wants to live here must follow tradition. Not only do they need to cook a meal for the housekeeper, but they have to satisfy her. He protests her decision-making skills, telling her he was assigned to this dorm. He then asks if he can use the leftovers they have, to which she agrees. She guides him to the kitchen where it is surprisingly clean despite the outward appearance. He looks around and finds basic ingredients, along with a majority of spices. Suma then tells Fumio that he has everything he needs, getting to work. He does the usual, extravagant cooking skills, displaying his skills. Fumio is then stunned once he presents a canned burger to her. Suma explains the ingredients and how he cooked it to her, trying to convince her to eat the canned meat. He gives the burger a name and presents rice and egg soup along with it. Fumio is hesitant to take a bite, but she decides to and is stunned beyond belief. After just one bite, she enters a translucent state, covering the taste of the food. She then tries egg soup and rice, thinking there's no way it will be that good. Fumio then questions Suma how he made a soup out of egg, to which Suma pulls out a squid leg. She is surprised again, making her decide to fold and continue eating the food. Fumio thinks of her younger days because of how tasty the food is. She remembers the time when she hit on a young boy, making him fall in love with her. Despite looking like an old hag now back in the days, Fumio used to be a bombshell. She tries to go and kiss Suma, thinking he is the boy from her dream. Megumi, on the other hand, takes a relaxing bath, enjoying her alone time. She wonders what Suma is doing, being grateful he won her the cooking competition. She reveals that she is also a member of the dorm, thinking kindly of Fumio. Following this, she goes to get out of the bath, but is stunned to see Suma entering. Fumio laughs to herself, thinking they will have their fun together. After finally getting on his new bed, he realizes what a long time it has been since he left home. While thinking, a man emerges from the roof, inviting him to a welcoming party. After entering, he finds a bunch of weirdos, including all kinds of people. Gumi, on the other hand, thinks about how crazy the people in her dorm are, specifically Suma. Suma asks if she took the entrance test as well to which she hesitates to tell him. Megumi informs Suma that she has been trying to enter the dorm for the past three months. During their party, a girl invites Suma to drink with her. He denies it. A couple of people then walk out, and a girl informs Suma that someone from the Elite Ten is coming. Suma then thinks about the Elite Ten, and remembers Arena being called one. The nerd of the dorm then explains to Suma the basics around the Elite Ten. Through all of the students in all grades, ten students are chosen as the best cooks. He informs Suma that the Elite Ten are above even the teachers, making them almost the most powerful people in the school. Following this, the student who invited Suma enters the room and introduces himself as Ishiki, a second year. He tells Suma that he is glad to have yet another friend to eat under the same roof as him. He shares his passion for cooking, telling all the students to try their hardest. Megumi remembers one of the nights that Ishiki talked to her through a pipe, talking to her even when she didn't respond, and offers everyone a drink, declares a toast, welcoming Suma and Megumi. Suma accepts the drink this time, making him feel buzzed for the first time. With them all being chefs, they not only get to drink good, but eat the best food. As of all the drinking, a couple students get into a brawl, and this spirals to other students. Episode 5 The following day, Suma tries a dish prepared by one of his classmates and wonders how it can be so good. After this, Ishiki reintroduces himself as a member of the Elite Ten, holding the seventh seat. Shocked, Suma is unsure if he can live up to Ishiki's standards after being challenged by him. Suma begins to get excited, finally realizing why his dad put him up to attending such a school. Suma inspects the dish and begins to ask more questions, wondering where his strength comes from. Ishiki explains to him that he has grown up cooking and learning the specifics of how to blend food. Suma thinks of it as being gentle like trees during the spring season. He then declares to Ishiki that he will prepare something befitting of his family's restaurant standards. As he begins to cook the students around the dorm smell his dish and check them out. After learning it's a cook-off between the two, they get super excited. They decide knowing how intense it is to not interfere and interrupt their cooking. Following this, Suma presents a dish to the others, giving his side of the cook-off. Ishiki, on the other hand, inspects the dish given to him and wonders why it looks so plain. He hesitates to take a bite, but once he does, it takes over. Everyone begins wondering how Suma made such a delicate and tasty dish. Ishiki explains a secret cooking method Suma did, making the food taste different. Ishiki then asks Suma how he learned such a method, to which Suma explains his dad taught him the tricks. Ishiki then wonders how his dad learned such a trick, inspecting the dish thoroughly. He takes note of every little spice and ingredient, wondering how he perfected it so much. 
The others continued to eat and enter a translucent state, making the dish seem more than just food. If a heavenly spell was cast upon them, they all become at peace within themselves. Shiki applauds Suma's cooking, realizing he is a true master. Megumi, on the other hand, wakes up to the naked Ashiki and becomes stunned. Following this, everyone leaves the room. Shiki tells him that he can answer any questions he might have. Suma instantly asks him about the Elite Ten, wondering how he can join it. Suma informs Ishiki that his father wants him to achieve something. Following this, he asks Ishiki if he beats him in a cook. Off, will he become a member of the Elite Ten? Ishiki dodges the question, redirects him into going to sleep to teach him a lesson. Ishiki informs us that in this academy, cooking is everything and one wrong move can mean the end, even for Soma. With the Elite Ten on his mind, Suma thinks about Arena, wondering if his cooking matches up to hers. Although she acted high and mighty, she definitely has the skills to back it. Next morning, as people start to awake, start to remember the horrors of last night. Maru, the nerdy boy, specifically curses himself for hosting the party yet again. Once they all arrive downstairs, they are greeted by Suma, declaring to Ishiki they will battle. Everyone walks away, treating Suma like a fool, making him wonder what happened. Shiki then informs Suma about how challenges work at their academy. Being held in a large stadium surrounded by onlookers, chefs compete to prove their name. Arena specifically is at battle today, facing off against a sumo-like chef. He seems angry with Arena for not using any traditional methods with her cooking. Arena, on the other hand, isn't one to let such comments slide. Sting him back, then tells him to prove his talents with his cooking rather than words, initiating the cook-off. Suma, on the other hand, explained the rules of competing for a seat of the Elite Ten. Ishiki explains to him that he must wager something of equal value to the Elite Ten. With him not having anything of importance within the Academy, just yet it's impossible for him to challenge an Elite Ten. The others tell him that he should wait a bit before challenging someone of that level. Suma doesn't back down, however, asking Ishiki how the cook-offs really happen. He explains to Suma all of the different components in a cook-off. The food is graded. So many rules a league is made with the name of Cooking Battle. Arena specifically has defeated the sumo man in her cooking battle for the day. Upon winning, she decides to take a bite of her opponent's meal, see what she beats. Arena enters a peaceful beach, and it is interrupted by a landslide of hippos running by. Instead of the judge explaining to him why he lost, Arena decides to enlighten him, informing him of all his faults. He gets enraged and decides to take a bite of Arena's food, hoping to reinforce his thoughts. After just one bite, he realizes he has lost, the food being too tasty. Following this, he falls to his knees and watches as the building he waged is destroyed. He finally realizes what battling someone of her level really means, vowing to never do it again. Episode 6 The next morning, Suma wakes up to be greeted by Ishiki in his ceiling, acting like a weirdo. He leaves him and goes to flirt with one of the girls in his dorm, hoping to get in good with her. She tells Suma his cooking was really good the night before, asking him to cook for her again. He informs him a little bit more about the dorm and all the roles of the students. Eventually, they arrive at a field of vegetables where Suma is stunned to see Ishiki working in the field. Wearing only the minimum clothing, he stands out like a fish, making Suma cringe. Megumi then approaches and greets Suma, asking her if her outfit is cute. Suma tells her it's a bit weird, but not as weird as Ishiki's outfit. He then decides to try a tomato grown in the garden and is stunned by its flavor. Ishiki explains to him that they specially grow all their vegetables to ensure their cooking is top class. Fumio, on the other hand, watches idly, wondering if this will be a new generation of all-star chefs. Gumi, however, gets tired of working, so she decides to present some rice balls to the group, hoping to initiate a break. They all run over and dive into the food, being hungry from all the work. As they begin eating, they start to realize how much effort Megumi put into the rice balls. She explains to the others all the different ingredients she used, specifically some honey. After seeing Suma use the honey, she decided to try it out herself. Following this, she presents some hot tea to the group, warming their stomachs up nicely. After eating all this good food, Suma realizes that at class, Gumi sucks at cooking, then asks her why she can't always cook like this, to which Megumi acts shy. Following this, the group transport their harvested crops to the fridges within the dorm. After this, they head to the main campus and inspect some of the different clubs. Suma finds one that piques his interest, so he decides to check it out. On arrival, he finds a lone man telling them to pick another club. Suma looks around and finds his cookbooks. After inspecting them, he realizes how creative the dishes are and wonders why he is being shut down. And informs Suma that Arena is the reason they are being forced to shut down. He tells her that she is cutting his budget, driving them into the ground. The man then informs Suma that the only way to overcome this is by having a cook-off against Arena. After this, all of the members of the group left him, giving him zero chance of ever defeating Arena. Suddenly, a woman named Mito enters, busty, dark-skinned woman. She pins the man against the wall and tells him to challenge her if he wants another chance. He attempts to focus, but is drawn to her chest, causing her to slash his hair off. Megumi notices this woman and informs Suma of her talents. 
Known as the Meat Master, Ito has never lost a cook-off making some of the best meat dishes. Ito then pins down Kenichi, the leader of the club, and demands he face off against her. Soma steps in the middle of this, stops her from going any further. She notices him from the opening ceremony and decides to challenge him instead of Kenichi. Suma tells her that if he wins, then she will have to join Kenichi's club, while Suma will have to be expelled from the school. Mito laughs at this request and decides to take on his challenge, announcing the main course as meat. Following this, Suma wonders how he will win, but remembers Kenichi's cookbooks remain. Mito, on the other hand, walks confidently excited to teach Suma a lesson. Later that night, the story reaches the newspaper, announcing Suma's first cook-off. Suma, however, doesn't seem faced, king with his club members on how to win. Kenichi informs him of the different types of meat he could use, so Suma decides to ask Megumi for her opinion. He tells him her favorite type of meat is a seafood don, filled with lots of good stuff. Kenichi tells Suma he doesn't stand a chance, still not knowing who Mido is. He explains that Mido is able to get the highest quality of meat, a grade meat. In the A-grade meat, there are five different levels with the level five at the highest quality. Kenichi informs Suma that five quality meat is so good that it's like you can drink it. Not only is Mido able to get this meat, she directly produces it thanks to her family. After talking with the others, Suma decides they should challenge her directly and show their skills. Kenichi is hesitant at first, but decides to follow Suma along and try out some of his recipes. After trial and error throughout the night, still unable to get a meal that tastes as perfect as they hoped, Suma wonders if he made the wrong decision, wagering his enrollment in the skill, but assures himself it will be okay. Following this, he suddenly gets an idea and decides to try it out. Upon completion, he presents it to Kenichi, who is stunned by the delicacy that he made it with. The two take a bite and realize it's not just for looks either, during a translucent state of mind. Oh,